right, bro, look. Hate More Part 6 is in the works. Huge shout out to my dog Omi as he works on that. But until then, I've decided to do this mega compilation of Part 1 through 5 of Hate More. I might do another compilation for all my jumping videos if you guys would enjoy that. And another one for Part 6 through 10 because there's a whole lot of haters we still gotta get through. Anywho, hope you guys enjoyed this compilation and I'll see you guys on Hate More Part 6. Remember when you were making out with your first girlfriend and you came right as she touched your leg? It was me, Barry. I jerked you off at super speed so it'd seem like you nutted at just a woman's touch! No matter where you look, whether it's the real world, movies, cartoons, or anime, there is a common occurrence that you will always find. Hating ass niggas. In all mediums you look, it's always gonna be somebody hating for no fucking reason. And today, we're gonna talk about some of them haters on the Mount Rushmore of haters that I've created over here. Since Mount Rushmore only has four faces, I could only put four people on here. But I can promise you, there are way more haters that I could be talking about. Uh, I might make a part two if this video gets like uh, 10 likes. I'll think about making a part two. But the first person we're gonna be talking about in this Mount Rushmore of haters is Colonel H. Stink Meter. Now, Stink Meter was just born to be a hater for no fucking reason. He hated everything. Rainbows, beautiful sights, other people. He doesn't care. He hates it all. And at a young age, bro, so they told him he was gonna go blind. And he was happy because he didn't have to see the doctor's ugly mug anymore. And from then on, he just decided to spread hate since they said he only had like a year left to live. This nigga took the word hatred, right? And decided to make it his personal mantra, his ninja way. And even with all this hating, right? On some odd miracle, this nigga lived to be an old man. I don't know how. But before I continue, right? There's something I must address with Stink Meter. Who the fuck gave this nigga a license? This man is blind and is an old man how is he still i don't even think he actually have a license he's just driving that's my personal theory he goes on the road and drives like a fucking maniac because i mean he can't see where he's going but somehow he knows exactly where his disabled parking spot is i want to find the person at the dmv who gave this nigga a license and kick them in their shin because how how do you let a blind man drive? That shit makes no sense to me. But after Stink Meaner dies, right? He goes to, you guessed it, hell. And this nigga's such a hating ass dude, right? He said hell ain't shit and called the devil a bitch ass me out. I will never understand how somebody can have this much hatred in their heart. So yeah, Stink Meaner definitely deserves his spot on the Mount Rushmore of haters. The next person we're gonna talk about is the Reverse Flash, AKA Eobard Thawne. Now Thawne wasn't always a hater. He used to be Barry's biggest fan in the future. He loved the Flash and he wanted to study the speed force that the Flash used. But they didn't want his ass doing that, because that's dangerous and probably illegal. Now, this man hated his younger brother, who unfortunately became a cop as they grew older, right? And while Thon was, you know, studying the speed force, which he was not supposed to be doing, he got caught by his brother. And what does he do? He goes back in time, kills his brother, right? And celebrates being an only child. Now that we've established the insanity that this man is running with, right? We get to Barry. Eobard Thawne basically obsessed over the Flash so much, right? He was like, hey, yo, why don't I become the Flash? And that's exactly what he did. After being the Flash for a little while, he was like, you know what? Why don't I, I, I wanna be the only Flash. So he goes back in time and tries to kill Barry, right? But then he realizes, hey, wh wait a minute. If I kill Barry, the speed force doesn't exist. That means I won't exist. Now, any normal person would have gave up here and was like, you know what, whatever, let me just continue being the Flash in the future. But nah, this nigga was like, since I can't be the only Flash, I'm just gonna torture this nigga for the rest of his life. So he goes back in time, right? And kills Barry's mom, which drove Barry to actually becoming the Flash. So basically, this nigga inserted himself in Barry's timeline. If Barry kills him, nobody goes back in time to kill his mom. Therefore, the Flash doesn't exist. And if the Flash goes back in time to stop his mom from dying, it creates a different timeline where everybody's dead. Which is basically Flash. And he didn't even stop there, right? Since this man made it his life mission to just hate on the flash right he goes to this nigga he goes back in time and just does petty shit to barry as a kid for no reason just because that's because he can't kill him he, he doesn't mean he's not gonna make his life a living hell barry's walking down the stairs he pushes that nigga down the stairs he sees barry happy making a new friend he kills that friend this man is insane on a completely different level for no reason just because he couldn't be the only flash so yeah this nigga's insane. Yeah. Now, the next person we're gonna be talking about goes by one name, D.I. 
Oh. Now Dio was unfortunately born poor. And basically got his hating ass ways from his dad. Since he was young, he's been, you know, doing shady shit for money. Now Dio was a smart kid, so you know, he played chess for money and occasionally get his ass beat. But he hated nothing more than his dad. And when that nigga was finally about to die, he told Dio, hey bro, look, the Joe Stars owe me a fucking debt, bro. Take this note to them and you know, go rob them for everything they got. And from that alone, you see where Dio got his his ways from and henceforward the menace known as Dio was born Dio shows up to the Joestar family mansion damn did y'all see how far she jumped off the porch if you don't jump your ass into an Olympic arena bitch you do great <laughs> and the first thing he does is kick the fuck out of their dog and immediately squared up with Jonathan. Like, bro, <laughs> this nigga is on some other level of hate. But before they got to scrapping, Joseph came out and stopped them from fighting. Later on, Jonathan wanted to help this man, you know, Gary his bag, so he goes to grab it. But Dio stops him and grabs his hands. It was like, hey, nigga, don't, don't touch my shit, bro. You with your dirty ass hands. And elbows this man in his chest. Had his ass wincing on the floor. <laughs> this man is something else, bro. This nigga is a true man. He showed up at the Joe Star family and decided he's gonna he's gonna hate on these niggas for their entire life. Now a lot of bullshit happened, but later on, Jonathan gets him a little girlfriend named Eddie and is being very happy. Now Dio saw this and was like, whoa, 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 nigga, we can't be having you being happy. Now. Finds Eddie now, right, and steals her first kiss, and we get the most famous line in anime. You thought your first kiss would be JoJo. But it was I, Dio! Kono Dio da! This nigga is the pinnacle of being a menace. Now from then on, a bunch of other bullshit happens, and now Dio's a vampire. And after being defeated by Jonathan, he made it his life's mission, however long he lives, to get rid of the Joestar family. And generations after generations, this nigga just hated on them. From Joseph to Jotaro and all their family line, he's just gonna be there hating. Now I could go on about all the other stuff that Dio did, but being the one who edits these videos, I, I don't want to make them too long so we're not gonna do that now the last person on this mount rushmore of haters is somebody near and dear to my heart because spider-man is my favorite hero and this nigga made it his life mission and life's work to hate on Spider-Man. It's none other than J. Jonah James or JJJ for short. The moment I thought of haters in fiction JJJ is the first person that came to my mind. This man has spent his entire career just hating on Spider-Man for no fucking reason. He finds a way to spin every good thing Spider-Man has done into him being a menace. For no reason, this man just decided he, he's going to hate on Spider-Man. I remember playing Spider-Man PS4 in Miles Morales, and every time this man comes on, I would sigh and wonder what the hell he's gonna scream about next. This man just never shuts up about Spider-Man being a fucking menace. Even when the Danny cast in the game right proved him wrong, <laughs> he cuts off the line and runs away. <laughs> it continues to scream about how this nigga's a menace. You can literally show this man proof that Spider-Man did something good and, <laughs> and he won't care. It continue to scream to the world how much of a menace Peter is. To be honest, but you gotta admire his dedication to his craft. Because I can't imagine how much energy it takes to just sit there and hate on one nigga. And since he has a podcast, bro, he probably gets paid for hating on Spider-Man. So yeah, J. Jonah Jameson definitely deserves his place on the Mount Rushmore of hating ass nigga. I spent seven dollars on a fake presidential campaign. All just to tick Superman off. Bruh. Alright, so last video, I arrogantly said if you guys could get the video to 10 likes, I would make a part 2. Well, then to my surprise, you you guys got a 200, well damn. So, to keep my promise instead of procrastinating like I usually do, I now present to you guys hating ass niggas part 2. Now the first person we're gonna talk about is the definition of hatred and when you think of hating ass nigga you think they have some sort of reason to be hating so much right while most of them probably don't and the reason is probably stupid they probably have some small reason for hating the person that they do well this person we're about to get on to has no reason to hate they were just born to hate and this person is none other than kid boo now if you've watched dragon ball or dragon ball z for any amount of episodes you you will usually hear the villain talking about blowing up the earth frieza another hater from dragon ball z that we we, we haven't talked about he, he's blown up a couple of planets and he said he was gonna blow up earth 
and that didn't go so well. He, he never got to it. Cell came and was like, all right, I'm going to blow up the planet. And Goku stopped. Everybody who said they were going to blow up the planet never really got to do it. They got defeated. And then we move on to Boo. Now, the moment we realized Boo was some sort of different creature, right? Is when Vegeta, after taking a fat ass L because, you know, he was being arrogant, tried to make a final sacrifice to take out himself and Boo along with him. Which promptly failed. And Boo just came back like nothing happened. To which everybody realized, this nigga is different. But from the looks of him, nobody would guess that Boo was the rumored guy that went around destroying Kai's and all their planets. Because he was just a fat, fluffy, bubbly dude. And then a lot of shit happens... People got eaten, and we get to Super Boo. Now, Super Boo was evil. I mean, he, he literally turned Chi Chi into an egg and stepped on it. While Fat Boo didn't look like the pinnacle of hatred that everybody was talking about, Super Boo looks a little bit closer to that. And he was a whole lot stronger. Piccolo trying to buy some time was like, wait, didn't you say you were gonna kill everybody on Earth? So how about you go do that and give us a little bit of time? This nigga thought Boo was gonna take six minutes like Frieza. But nah, he just stood there on the lookout fired a beam, and in seconds, murked out the whole human population. Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. Piccolo was flabbergasted, because, <laughs> yo, this nigga actually killed everybody on Earth. After all the shenanigans with Kid Trunks and a whole bunch of other fights happened, we get the true menace. The true embodiment of hatred. That is Kid Boo. Unlike his predecessor, Fat Boo, and Super Boo, there was something different about this guy. One, he didn't talk. Now, while all previous villains, you know, talked about, you know, oh, I'm gonna destroy the earth. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm gonna d blow up the earth now. Kid Boo said not a single word. Charged up an energy bomb and blew up the earth. And everybody was like, oh, shit. So, so that's what they meant by this nigga's the pinnacle of hatred. And they all escaped to heaven. Kid Boo, not wanting to give up his hating ass ways, right? Promptly followed them to heaven and started running the face. Them niggas was catching hands left and right and they couldn't do nothing about it. This man was a whole nother level of hating. And I think to this day, he is the only villain that actually managed to destroy the earth. And he did it without saying a single word. Now the next person we're gonna talk about is a true hating ass nigga. Because he only hates for the petty reason. And that is none other than Lex Luthor. That clip from the beginning of the video just tells you everything you need to know. Do you want to know the reason Lex Luthor hates Superman? Like, are you sure you're ready to hear this? The reason Lex Luthor hates Superman is because Superman is more popular than him. <laughs> this nigga can't stand the fact that everybody loves Superman more than they love him. So he's like, bro, I'm going to make it my life mission just to annoy this nigga. I know I can't actually kill him, but I will make it my life mission just to bother him at every fucking turn. Lex Luthor will spend millions of dollars on a farce saying he's going to better a city, right? He's gonna give this great technology, but there's a bomb just to try and prove that Superman can't save everyone. Like, bro, this man takes the word petty and just eats it up and made it his entire being. Like, bro, this man is smart. He is smarter than Batman, but he entirely uses his intellect just to fuck with Superman. Because he sees Superman as his rival somehow. Like, bro, when I tell you this man is uh, just the different type of hater, he really is. He went and figured out the anti-life equation. The thing that Darkseid has been searching for for his entire life and just brought it to him. I thought Dio was the ultimate guy for just petty hatred, right? But I was wrong. It's really Lex Luthor. This man just hates for no reason. Or actually, just petty ass reason. Like, he's proven so many times that he can get on the level of Superman when it comes to power. But, you know, he always gets foiled by Superman, which just fuels his hatred. But low key, I, I think this man is just racist. Like, it bothers him so much that Superman, an alien, is looking down on humanity, even though that's not what Superman is doing. But that's what he things he's like why, why the fuck are you an alien looking down on us so his whole goal is to prove that superman is not all power that humans can be great but he yeah. just be hating so much that his actual message just falls by the wayside lex luther is truly a hater among haters but on the topic of hater among haters the next person on this list uh, just hate niggas yeah. why does he hate niggas we we don't know he just doesn't like black people now last video i had stink meaner from the boondocks now the reason i chose stink meaner for that last video is because he's stink meaner he, he's just hatred incarnate but another dude who is on the level of stink meaner when it comes to being a hating ass dude is none other than uncle ruckus no relation this man will find any way or form 
Two called black people monkeys and niggas and just yes, uh, cave dwellers or whatever. For no fucking reason. This man swears up and down that he has the reverse of what Michael Jackson had. That he was supposed to be a white man. Like, Uncle Ruck is, is the definition of a racist black person. He doesn't like black people. This nigga been hating on Martin Luther King Jr. since he first started his campaign. Dance there, you goddamn chunky cheek monkey. Huh? You don't remember me. Well, I've been throwing bricks at your marching ass since 1959. And so, brothers and sisters, you know I... Hey, shut the hell up, you black son of a bitch. What's wrong with y'all? Thank God for the white man's infinite mercy, my... Ah! I have never seen somebody so dedicated to throwing bricks at some dude, bro. This nigga said he was happy sitting in the back of the bus. Like, damn, nigga, speak for yourself, bro. Not everybody wants to be a slave. Do you guys want to know why I said that Uncle Ruckus is possibly on the level of stink meaner when it comes to hating? Well, that's because he was the only one to be able to get that nigga stink meaner back to hell. Them niggas hated everything so much that they bonded at the last moment, which is what got stink meaner to go back to hell because, you know, he was laughing his ass off. It was just like, damn, homie. You you valid, bro. You a hating ass nigga to the head to the core. Now the next person on our Mount Rushmore of hating ass niggas is somebody that's old school. And this dude rivals Lex Luthor for the crown of, you know, petty hating ass dude. And it's none other than Eustace B Baggy B Bag? I, I don't know, bro. I'll say Baggy. This crusty, dusty ass old man hates on his dog Courage for the pettiest reason ever in the world. Bro, this nigga hates Courage. Because Muriel gives courage more attention. Muriel's just a nice old lady, you know, just trying to live her life peacefully. However peacefully can get with courage, dumbass in the house. But Eustace just finds every way to try and hate on courage. Like, bro, this man is so jealous that courage is getting more love from Muriel that his whole shtick in the show is just scaring courage for no fucking reason. That's why his dumbass be getting bunked in the head with the roller. Oh, uh, the nigga chin built ass. Strong ass shoulders or cucumbers for eyes yeah. having ass. I don't know where the fuck he got that fat ass hat from. But he need to return that bitch. Your elbows looking like they trying to do the hokey pokey nigga. Like, yo, bro, how the fuck does this nigga hear it? Oh my god! <laughs> no wonder he's so mad all the time, bro. I mean, if my ears were built like that, bro, I'd be mad too. Like, this nigga head is just wild, bro. What kind of physique is this? Nigga, long ass. <laughs> like damn, ever considered taking your ass to stomp the yard, but you do great. But yeah, Eustace has always been an annoying ass character, just how much he hated on Curry. Now I've seen the comments and everybody's like, Yo, where's Freezer? Where's Freezer? <laughs> Hello, monkeys. Bruh. <clears throat> Alright, so I got home literally a couple hours ago. I got to take me a nice nap, and you know, I was just gonna relax for the rest of the day. Try to get my voice some time to heal and get better. But the more I laid on my bed, the more I wanted to record part three. So that's what I got up and did. Even though my voice is still ass, I'm finally home and can actually record some crispy audio. And before I continue, I have to thank this subscriber right here for giving me the idea of calling this series Mount Hate More because the Mount Rushmore of hating ass niggas was way too long of a title. But moving on, I present to you people finally Hating Ass Niggas Part 3. Now the person we're gonna be starting this video off with is competing with Lex and Eustace for having the pettiest reasons to hate somebody. Bro. When I posted a poll on my community tab, which is 5k jesus oh my god i'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that i now have 12,000 of you who watch my videos <laughs> so many more eyes looking at me now <laughs> this is scary but <laughs> more money for me <laughs> darn it i've gotten off topic i'm sorry guys but the person we're actually going to be talking about today for a first hating ass nigga is none other than dbz broly now over the years broly has gotten some changes made to his story currently broly's just a dude who wants to live in peace and has no hate in his heart therefore we can't really talk about that guy but dbz broly <laughs> that's a whole different story bro do you want to know the reason why dbz broly hates the name kakarot so much do you really want to hear this petty ass niggas reason for just running the fade with all of the earth sayings and just clapping their cheeks embarrassing vegeta as all of the villains usually do and just giving goku the hand well i'm going to tell you the reason this man hates goku so much it is because 
Goku cried as a baby. I beg your pardon? <laughs> this man is so petty that as a baby is himself, like a right? He remembers Goku crying so much that the name Kakarot just sends him into a fucking rage. Broly and Goku were born on the same day and were put into pods right next to each other. While Broly was an abnormally strong baby with a power level of 10,000, right? Goku was just a regular ass baby who does the only thing that babies do which is cry and Broly just got offended for the, the rest of his life that this 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 baby who was put right next to him decided to cry and just spent his whole life trying to find Kakarot to kill him because this nigga just cried too much as a baby honestly bro I have to give it to DBC Broly cuz bro this man's been hating since he was a baby now the next person on this list was highly when I and I'm telling you highly requested by everyone from part one and part two everybody's been asking where this person is and to be honest bro i don't know how i didn't put this nigga in part one or two bro i completely forgot arguably the biggest hater in anime this man hates on a whole race and it is none other than the richest to rags king of all haters himself Frieza out here ruining foot fetishes for everyone, but okay. Frieza takes hating to a whole new level. Because in the beginning, Frieza didn't destroy planet Vegeta because you know he didn't like the Saiyans or whatever. He was racist. Well, not really, but he was he was still racist. But he was actually told to destroy it by Beerus because everybody was scared of the Saiyans. They just went around conquering planets and they were just being menaces to all the other planets around them. I really feel like everybody just forgets that the Saiyans were literally evil. Like, they were just a war-mongering, battle-hungry race. They didn't care. And when Beerus heard about the Super Saiyan God, well, of course, he, he kind of got scared and told Frieza to go fuck him up. But since some Saiyans actually escaped planet Vegeta being destroyed, Frieza had to, you know, go and finish his job and hunt down the other Saiyans with the side of racism. Now, what makes this nigga truly hate the Saiyans was after he takes his first L from Goku because he was just humiliated on Namek even though not many people actually saw that fight he was still humiliated we saw the fight and when he came back to earth to finish the job right he promptly got turned into sashimi by trunks right along with his dad and to be honest i feel like that's where the true hatred of saiyans for frieza started bro after he took so many l's to the saiyans he, he he really started going off the deep end and just wanted to get rid of them they managed to fuck up his plans over and over again and just kept getting stronger no matter how many times he killed them like bro frieza was literally born strong so he never knew what being weak was like this nigga was born with the ability to just destroy planets so when he sees some a race that he refers to as weaker than him and beneath him started running the fades and, and you know giving him some L's you know, he had to fall back on you know being a hating ass nigga for the rest of their life like bro imagine you fighting your op and he just starts smacking you mid fight telling you to get some sense into you bro I'd be mad too and on some real shit bro I don't even think Frieza's not racist you what <laughs> what Bro, what are you talking about, man? Nah, hear me out, for real, hear me out, bro. The Saiyans literally have tails and transform into a giant ape. What is he supposed to call them? Like potatoes? Like, bro, they, they literally look like monkeys, so he, he calls them monkeys. Now, to address the most common comment I've been getting from Mount Hate More Part 2, Oh, Frieza also blew up planet Earth. Frieza did a blow up. Okay, I get it. Frieza actually managed to blow up the earth in resurrection f but you know time travel shenanigans happen and you know they stopped him before he actually did it so either way i'll give you guys the point frieza did blow up the earth hoorah now moving on to the next face that very much belongs on mount hate more over here it is none other than the babysitter from hell vicky i could have easily put mr crocker on this list and nobody would bat an eye but we're gonna save him for like part five or something now vicky is truly a relatable hater to be honest because she just hates kids and somehow decides being a babysitter is the best job to do like that just sounds so backwards and dumb to me but in my head canon vicky's just evil and likes to torture children which is not cool but she be like me for real vicky has a younger sister named tootie and anybody with younger siblings will always tell you that they hate them there is nothing more annoying than living in a house with a younger sibling they do the dumbest things for no reason and are always trying to find new ways to annoy you and ever since my two-year-old niece started living with us i really realized why people don't want kids broken controllers everything she touches she throws oh my goodness vicky's not a hater bro 
she has a good reason to be hating on Timmy's stupid ass, bro. Cause Timmy making that nigga be making some dumb ass wishes. Like, bro, his dumb ass would rather wish for chocolate shake than fucking world peace or some shit. Like I said, bro, if you have a younger sibling, you'll understand where Vicky's coming from. But that doesn't explain her wanting to be a dictator. So in the movie Channel Chases, right? Timmy wished for a remote that could send him into the TV shows he watched. And when Vicky realizes the power of the remote, instead of you know doing the sensible thing of <laughs> opening the hub, she decided to go to dictator week and become a dictator. Like, bro, you have to be a completely different kind of hater to decide of all things you would could do is go and hate on the world. Like, bro, she'd rather be Hitler than go into Dragon Ball Z and getting superpowers. Like, you're so dumb. But yeah, Vicky is a hater like no others, to be honest. Because she actually manages to be somewhat relatable. All right, now our next person on this list is not relatable at all. Like, bro, could you imagine having beef with a 10-year-old? Exactly. But the next person on our list decides to hate on a 10-year-old because he was a trash criminal. And that's none other than Sideshow Bob. When I tell you Sideshow Bob is a hater among haters, I truly mean it. You see, Bob used to work for Krusty the Clown, but he got tired of being Krusty's sidekick because the job was demeaning and, you know, he was always the butt of the joke. So he framed the dude for armed robbery and sent him to jail. But Bart somehow figures out that, hey, bro, this nigga framed Krusty and got him sent to jail. And ever since then, Sideshow Bob has been a hating ass nigga to a 10 year old boy. This nigga really woke up and decided to have beef with a 10 year old boy. Like, this man is constantly plotting to kill Bart. And you know what's wild is? He actually has managed to kill the dude. Like, every second this man is out of jail is another second of plotting to kill Bart. Now, there's one glaring thing I haven't been telling you about Bob. And it's that this man's feet are longer than a bit. Bro, unlike Frieza, you actually getting the foot fetishes right. Like, bro, this nigga feet so long he has to fold them bitches to put on shoes. Like, how? I ain't never seen some shit like that before. And do you want to know something? that's even wilder bro this man has another enemy apart from Krusty and Bart and it's rape. no matter how much this nigga tries he will never stop being the butt of every joke because he will always there will always be a rake to step on to smack him in the face and he knows that he just uses it to fuel his hatred towards Bart this man will go through any lengths to try and kill Bart and honestly I, I admire his dedication Ooh. My poor father trapped in a ring of fire by me nor a coup. Bruh. <laughs> now, how did you put it? Oh, yes. Your time on this miserable Aku infested land continues. <laughs> Mom! Oh, Finney's and Ferb are making a title. Oh, hell. hell no, man. What the fuck? We have come a very long way, like 13, 13,000 of you in the last month decided to subscribe to this channel. And I only need three more thousand of you to actually reach 20K. So subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Now we also have come a long way with this series. We're already in part four. And the suggestions you guys are giving me, there's definitely gonna be a part five. Yep, you, you can believe your eyes, yes, Sato Kaiba will be in part 5. My voice is still not at 100%, but I will put as much energy into this video as I possibly can. And without further ado, I present to you guys, Hating Ass Niggas, part 4. To start off part 4, we will literally be starting with someone who is the definition, literal definition of preying on a nigga's downfall. I present Eddie Brock everyone not the newest one uh, the guy from the sam raimi movie and from my favorite raimi movie too spider-man 3 spider-man 3 was the first superhero movie my parents ever bought for me and i've said this in the why spider-man is the best superhero video already but like i watched the hell of that movie and whenever this scene came up bro this one scene of this nigga in the church before we get to that let me take y'all back to the beginning all right so eddie brock also worked at the daily bugle with peter parker and they're both trying to get pictures of spider-man because that's what j jonah jameson wants you know he hating ass nigga we already talked about him and he wants pictures of spider-man so he could slander him and so peter and eddie are competing but it's not really a fair competition since one of them is actually spider-man so now while they're competing 
Eddie gets this picture of Spider-Man in the black suit and the front page. And Peter, who's slowly going insane, comes up to him. So Eddie starts bragging and is like, yeah, nigga, I finally got this picture of Spider-Man that you said I would never get, bro. Man, we saw his true colors in this black suit. And Peter, who's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, like I already said, is like, hey, bro, you're, trash, bro. you're a fraud. And Eddie's like, bro, why you have to be a little boy scout at a time? Give me a little break. And that's when we get this line. You want forgiveness? Get religion. What's that nigga said, hey, bro, you want forgiveness? Get religion. And Eddie took that personally. Because he got fired after that because the picture of Spider-Man was fake. And that's when his true hatred of Spider-Man started. And this nigga decided to literally go to church and pray on that nigga's downfall. God, I come to you humbled and humiliated to ask you for one thing. <laughs> Kill that nigga, Peter Parker. I want him dead. This nigga literally went to pray on a dude's downfall. I've never seen some shit like that before. And crazily enough, he gets what he wants because while he was praying on Peter's downfall, that nigga was trying to get rid of the symbiote suit like on top of the church and Eddie becomes Venom right afterwards. Like, bro, never in my life as a kid did I ever think I'd see a nigga actually praying on someone's downfall. But moving on, the next person we're going to be talking about is none other than just... just the senseless hating ass dude known as Mr. Turner. This nigga hates on Dinkelberg literally for no reason. I remember watching the show and never understanding why this nigga hated Dinkelberg so much. But there was actually an episode that came out that explained why Mr. Turner hated Dinkelberg. Somewhat. This nigga been hating on Dinkelberg since they were children. Why you might ask? It's because Dinkelberg was rizzing up his girl. All the way up until college where this nigga was actually a fucking janitor, real old lame man. But after Dinkelberg got a whole bunch of money for wearing some parachute pants, he left Mrs. Turner. And that's when Mr. Turner swooped in and got the girl. But this motherfucker continued hating Dinkelberg for no fucking reason, bro. The dude was out your life. Like, bro, they finally got a new house, right? And this dumbass decided to throw the for sale sign next door into the lawn of the next house over. To which the Dinkelberg saw the for sale sign and decided to move in. And this nigga got mad. Yeah. Like, nigga, this is your fault. And Dinkelberg even said the house was bigger and better than the one next door. Like, why the fuck did you go to the this nigga so stupid, bruh. This nigga just be hating on Dinkelberg at every fucking turn he gets, bruh. Dinkelberg gets a cool robot car, he's gonna try to build one himself to beat him up with it. And you wanna know what the wildest part is? Apart from rizzing up his girl and dumping her after he got money, right? Dinkelberg's just a nice dude living his life with his wife. Bars. And he just tries to be nice to them, but this nigga just keeps hating for no reason. Any opportunity this nigga gets to, to slander or, or throw something at the Dinkelberg's house, he, he will do it. Just because Dinkelberg Dinkelberg rizzed up his girl in the past. Now that's a true hating ass nigga. These motherfuckers are mowing the lawn outside, but I can't record. Now the next person on our Mount Hate More here is none other than everyone's favorite cosplayer of the letter P and Q, Candace Flynn. All right, bro, Candace is a whole basket case of hate because not only is she a hater, but she's also a snitch. This girl has been trying to snitch on her brothers for. The whole summer! Like, damn, cuz you don't have anything else you could be doing? Like, bro, Candace is such a hating ass nigga, right? That even when her brothers create some of the coolest inventions around, she would rather sit there and hate instead of, you know, hopping in and trying them bitches out. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like she never actually tried any of their inventions. You know, she did the monster truck thing and a couple of others that, you know, she kind of was forced into. But every single time, this girl just sit there hating and keep trying to snitch on them boys. And when she finally succeeded, right, she wasn't even happy. Well, she was happy for like two seconds and then she realized, damn, I, I just fucked them niggas up. All because she wanna be a hating ass nigga for no reason. And I know some of y'all gonna be like, ah, she was worried for their safety. Bro, they are literal geniuses and they always wear their helmets. So I don't see the problem here. Candace just enjoys being a hater and has nothing else to do. Now the next person on our list is he who shall not be. <laughs> Actually, I should really put him on the list sometime. Voldemort is a hating ass nigga, but we're not talking about him today. The last person on our list is none other than the most horrendously devious and malicious person or thing you could ever have as a fucking op. Aku. Now, the amount of things that Aku has done to Jack just to fuck with him is absolutely wild. But while remembering Samurai Jack, I remembered one moment, one episode when Aku really kind of 
went a little bit too far. I mean, Aku goes too far all the damn time. Like, he killed that Scotsman, took over the world, and a whole bunch of other heinous things that he's done. But this episode was something else. So Jack has been in the future for a little minute now, and he's starting to get tired of it. He's like, bro, I want to go back home. I want to go and smack the fuck out of this nigga Aku. After getting some information, he finds out about this jewel that can send him back in time. But as he's getting the information on where to go and how to find it, Aku's robots come to attack him. And I'm not gonna lie, bro, Jack was getting pieced up. He didn't have his sword. And after losing his makeshift weapons, right, the robots were finally coming for his ass. And right as he's about to die, he is saved by this random woman. And after working together, they finally just, they got, they got rid of the robots and escaped. After traveling together for a little minute to, you know, find the gym, she finally explains her backstory. And she was like, yeah, my father, you know, tried to fight uh, that handsome devil Aku, but he took a fat ass L and now he's imprisoned in a ring of fire. And Jack was like, damn, so you're, you're a pure heart warrior trying to, you know, do right too. When we find this gym, we're gonna get your dad and we're, and we're gonna send my ass back in time. Eventually, she finally tells him her name. Her name is Ikra. Also, that's an ugly ass name, but okay. After a little bit what more traveling, that? they get to the gym and Jack is like, hey, yo, Holmes, I heard you got the power to send me back to time. Come on, do that. Go, get on with it, homie. And the gem fires this beam to test if they're of pure heart. After firing the beam, Jack was like, you know what, we're, we're gonna pass this easily. This is two warriors of pure heart going to save, the, you know, we're gonna save her dad and then we're gonna go back in time to kill Aku. But they failed. And Jack was like, hey, what the fuck? Something's wrong. And since Jack is a noble dude, he don't wanna fight the gym because he don't even know what the fuck is wrong. And he almost got cooked because of that. But Ikra, Ikra don't give a flying rat's ass. But listen, she, she got up and started fighting that thing. And after Jack saw her move, he was like, hey, yo, why you ain't telling me you could fly, man? We we rode on a donkey. And an Ikra head ass was like, hey, bro, that's not the only thing I could do. And starts growing. And then had a whole kaiju battle with the monster. So after defeating the monster, Ikra picks up the gym. And Jack was happy. Hooray, Holmes, I'm finally gonna go home. Ikra holds up the gym for a second and then does this. Hey, yo, what the fuck, Holmes? And then Ikra starts laughing. And then we get the most heinous reveal of all cartoons. This bit Ikra reveals herself to be none other than Aku. Man, I fell down to my knees when the law came. Jack turned into Vegeta for a second, bro. And then this nigga Aku started talking. He was like, bro, look, I heard about this gym, right? But, you know, I knew I couldn't get it and I didn't know where it was. So, you know, I, I had to trick your dumb ass to find it for me. And now it's gone. You're stuck in the future, and there's nothing you could do. And this whole time, bro, that nigga just mocking him, bro. I felt so bad for Jack after watching that episode, bro. Like, damn, cut. First, you send me forward in time, and then you gonna have the audacity to do this. And I didn't even talk about the daughters of Aku. Because, again, I don't want to make these videos too long. But, yeah, bro, Aku is the definition of hatred and just evil. So he deserves his spot on Mount Hatemore. But, yeah, man, I'm already assembling the people from Mount Hatemore Part 5. Starting with Kaiba, so y'all better watch out for that in the community posts. Now, the first and leading person that me and JP have decided to put in this video... <laughs> Okay. It's his gremlin ass. Now the Grinch is a very special individual. In more ways than one. First of all, he's literally green. Yeah. Second, he literally does not fit in with any species on earth. But the reason that me and JP decided to put him in the beginning of the video is because he's more than just a menace. I'm not gonna lie, he's probably the worst one on this list. I mean, not only does he steal gifts, but he steals gifts from children. Now I have you know, children are probably the most wholeheartedly pure human beings on this earth. Are you sure about that? I mean, there's a reason why pedophiles get charged harder than murderers. I mean, you might as well consider the Grinch one too. This man literally sneaks into people's chimneys at night, steals their presents, and uses those presents to decorate his place. If you would even call it that. I mean, there is a reason why this is the most feared man in all of Whoville. The children are scared of him. The adults are scared of him. I mean, there's a reason why even Santa doesn't even visit Whoville. Because he knows all and well that if he ever wants to spin the Whoville, he's going to have to deal with this green looking gremlin, bro. Which I really don't blame him. Because this man Grinch might have some crazy hands for all we know. I ain't going to lie. The people at Obal might be scared of him. I mean, this man is literally like a deadly gremlin, bro. Like, who in their right mind hates Christmas? I mean, yeah, sure. He's alone like every Christmas. But that doesn't mean you go break into children's houses and go steal their presents, bro. What you should do is go touch some grass and go meet some people. Because there ain't no reason why you're ruining other people's days. All because you have no friends. That's honestly just ridiculous in my opinion. But I'm going to go ahead and close that out here. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to JP now. No matter where you look, you're going to find a bunch of haters. Even.
living in the real world. A lot of you have been asking me to add low tier God you are and worthless. Uh, baby Skip Bayless on here because apparently they some hating ass niggas. Just because they're not in part five doesn't mean they're not gonna show up in in a future part maybe. But for this video, we have four of the most heinous hating ass niggas in media. And this episode's a little bit different than the rest too. So look, bro, these niggas are so heinous. I had to get it out. Oh. Today I will be featuring three other YouTubers on part five. I know that sounds crazy, but. It's happening. If I don't make you see how much of a hating ass nigga these, these, these four contestants are, one of them will definitely convince you. So yeah, grab some popcorn and a bucket of ice as I present to you all hating ass niggas part five. We're going to be talking about a nigga who started hating in episode one of the show. Next to Luther, Kaiba is one of the richest haters around. And this man started hating literally in episode one of the show. So Yugi's sitting there playing dual monsters with Joey, right? And Joey loses, of course. And then all of Yugi's other friends showed up to see what the fuck's going on. Which, mind you, they're all in the same class. And then you see Kaiba's hating ass fake reading a book. But this nigga was just being nosy Bruh. listening to their conversation. As he's sitting there being nosy, right? He hears that... Yugi's grandpa has a super special car. And here he goes, man, that better not be the car that I fucking want. Yugi goes to his grandpa's store, you know, so he, he could show off the super car that, 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 that his grandpa got. And when this nigga finally shows everybody the card, it's the blue eyes white dragon. One of the most powerful cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Everybody's fucking astonished. They're flabbergasted. They're like, oh my God, that's such a cool card. Oh my God, it's so strong. And then here comes this hating ass oh nigga Kaiba. God. He's like, hey, old man, give me that fucking card. Dude says no. And Kaiba's like, look, bro, look, I have... I have all these extra strong cards right here. I will trade all of them just for your blue eyes white dragon. Because there's only four of them, uh, like, available. And Yugi's grandpa still says no. And this nigga's like, oh my god. Bro, bro, how much do you want for it? Name your price and I will give it. First of all, bro, this nigga's in high school and has so much money that he could just tell somebody name their price. But anyways, Yugi's grandpa still says no. And then he walks off. Ain't nobody ever tell me no, nigga. I'm getting number one duelist in the world. I'm gonna get what the fuck I want, nigga. I'm getting that card. He goes home. And gets his fucking bodyguard. Hey, bro, y'all know that game shop, right? Well, they have something I need. And this nigga sends his goons to go tell this man a message. They're like, hey, bro, Kaiba wants a fucking duel with you. At first, Yugi's grandpa reluctant, but then he agrees to duel Kaiba because he wants to teach that nigga a lesson. Yugi and his entourage comes to the store after school, right? And that shit is empty. And they're confused as fuck. Like, where, where, did, where did his grandpa go? And then this nigga gets a phone call. Uh, hello? Uh, game shop here? What's good, little bitch? Kaiba! <laughs> Listen here, little nigga. I got your grandpa. Come and get his ass off the floor. I'm Rick James, bitch. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> so they all run to Kaiba's building and find Yugi's grandpa on the floor. And he's like, oh my god, Yugi. I, I tried to battle him, but he I lost. He got the car. And then Kaiba comes out and commits his first heinous act of hatred. He shows them the blue eyes white dragon card, right? There's only four of them in the world. And he rips that shit apart. Like, bro, he didn't even want it. He just wanted to be a hater. So yeah, bro, Kaiba's in a league of his own, you know, when it comes to hating. But there's even more. So yeah, after all that debacle, right, he dueled Yugi and took his first L ever. And this nigga took it as a sign to amplify his hatred. Now we get to the Duelist Kingdom tournament. And it's him against Yugi. They're dueling. Yugi's pulling ass pulls as usual. But then Kaiba being an actual genius, right? He actually made Yugi play into his hands. And he got to summon the ultimate blue eyes white dragon. And that nigga was powerful. Nobody saw how Yugi could win. But you know, as Yugi is the king of ass pulls and cheating, he somehow survives the first ultimate dragon attack. Now, before all this happened, right? Kaiba had played a card that gave Yugi a virus that made him unable to play any monsters that has more than 1,500 attack power. So, you know, Yugi pulling an ass pull, pulls out Kuribo. And then here he goes talking about believing the heart of the card. Kaiba's like, hey, bro, Kuribo's like the weakest nigga in the game. What makes you think it's gonna survive an attack from my ultimate dragon? Yugi's like, haha, you dumbass. Stupid. I have another card. And he shows Kaiba a card that multiplies Kuribo infinitely. Which I swear that's just fucking cheating. But whatever, since since Kuribo keeps multiplying, he's using this nigga as a meat shield. Uh fur shield. So that means no matter how many times the ultimate dragon attacks, it will never reach Yugi. Kaiba was flabbergasted like, how the fuck? But Yugi's like, but wait, there's more. He pulls more bullshit out of his ass and combines three different cards and infects this nigga's ultimate dragon from the inside. So now this nigga's ultimate dragon will lose 
1,200 attack points every turn. Kaiba's like, hey, yo, what the fuck, bro? How did I get here? But yeah, Kaiba seeing no way he could win, right? Thinks of a strategy. Something else I didn't mention that happened before this is that Mr. Yugi Boy Yugi over Boy? here took Mokuba and Yugi's grandpa's soul. And he's gonna release whoever the winner is. Mokuba is Kaiba's younger brother, by the way. So yeah, this game was high stakes. And Kaiba's like, man, I can't afford to lose this shit right now. And does the most heinous oh! thing any anime character has done. Like, bro, forget Dio putting the Joestar's dog in the fucking furnace and just hating on their whole fucking bloodline. Forget Lex spending billions of dollars on a fake campaign. This nigga Kaiba backs up on the ledge and is like, I'm gonna win this one way or another. Yugi, if you do the last attack and kill my ultimate dragon, the shockwave might just, you know... <laughs> me over and I might fall and get hurt. So what do you pick, Yugi? And so I just stood there just flabbergasted that this nigga's such a sore loser that he's willing to put his life on the line like that. Like, bro, that is wild. And it doesn't even end there. Like, bro, Kaiba got so mad that he never actually got a fair win against Yugi, right? He travels back in time. Uh, post-editing JP here, he didn't go back in time. This nigga sent his consciousness to the afterlife just so he could run the ones with the pharaoh. Like, bro, this, this nigga deserves his pot on, on the Mount Hatemore, bro. Because how hateful do you have to be to decide to go back in time just to run the fade? That's like Kid Boo going up to heaven to run the fucking fade. Like, bro, these haters are something else, bro. I am literally about to say the n-word right now, okay? <laughs> Griffith from Berserk. Oh man, this dude is crazy. Originally in the story of Berserk, Griffith is seen as like a, a leader, you know, and a good person, a hard-working dude. Uh, but then you keep watching. Bro, the switch from good Griffith to evil Griffith is actually one of the craziest plot twists I have ever witnessed in fiction. Bro, Griffith only started his true villain arc because he got caught clapping the king's daughter and shit, and then the king was like, hey, only I get the clap on my daughter's cheeks. And then they locked his ass up. They tortured him for like a year and shit. But then this stupid ass, bitch ass nigga, just decided to blame everything on Guts for no reason. Like, what did Guts do? You got caught lacking and you got punished for it. This ain't got nothing to do with Guts. But the thing that really sent Griffith over the edge was when Guts said, hey, bro, uh, I can't help you follow your dreams no more, man. Like, that, damn, I gotta follow my own dreams. Huh? I love you, Griffith, but I, I gotta follow my own shit, bro. You feel me? Come on now. Griffith did not like this. Bro was so angry about Guts leaving the crew, he straight up abandoned his humanity and just <laughs> went on a killing spree. And he, he even tried to kill Guts right there and then. Like, you don't want to... You don't want to be my slave? Oh, 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 oh okay. Th then die, type shit. But Guts <laughs> broke his sword and then Yo, embarrassed like his bitch ass. No, w Guts, bro. Guts is always out here, bro. But but listen, Griffith sacrificed his entire squad, his entire crew, and all of his friends and homies that he with for like years. At least like five or six years he rolled with all of these people. And all of the people he sacrificed were people who looked up to him and loved him like like a brother. I, I'm telling you, bro, Griffith does not have a single redeeming quality about him. A except for the fact that he's pretty hot. But, but besides that, Griffith was such a hater. He made Guts, who was his best friend for three years, watch him, R-word his girlfriend, right in front of him. You cannot get more evil than this, bro. This is peak evil. And he only did the R-word thingy because he wanted to get back at Guts and fuck with him and break him mentally just because Guts wanted to follow his own dreams and follow his own path. Like, Griffith was looking straight into Guts' eyes eyes as he graped his girlfriend bro fuck this dude bro fuck you Griffin. i hate him i hate him th th this is tough fuck i feel sick to my stomach talking about this guy so fuck griffith all my homies hate griffith as a professional hater i can't even condone the amount of hating this nigga scar does throughout the movie off the muscle he shows nothing but hatred and on top of that, characteristics of a bitch nigga. This nigga hates Mustafa so much that he despises this nigga's son before he's even a day old. All because he's not king. Which, I get it. I can see why he could be mad. But that's because nobody wants his nobody ass to lead the kingdom. He lets the hyenas do all his smoke. 
He even says it within the first minute of the movie, when Big Homie Mustafa presses him. Ah, if it isn't Mufasa, punk ass king of the kingdom, how you doing Mufasa? No, my son was born today, where was you? Oh, that was today? Must have forgot. But that hairball is fucking shit up. That hairball is your nephew and future king. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Don't turn your back on me, Scar. You should be the one worried about your backside. My nigga, is that a threat? You don't want no smoke with me? Yes, you are right. I am just a bitch ass nigga with knowledge while your big buddy ass is king. But you got it, I am a bitch. I'm sorry, big bro. I'll slide off the block. Damn, your brother's a hoe. Yeah, I know. So once Simba grows up, Scar does his first act of hatred by trying to get this little nigga iced. But this fails because, unlike Scar, Simba is actually a cold nigga. Look at the way he slaps the shit out of the hyena to save Shorty, then he slides up out of there. Even this nigga Scar recognizes that he's an issue. You can see it in his hate and smug. And to make it even worse, his homies don't even respect him for real. Can't believe we ran off the block like that. Nigga Mustafa got crazy hands. Man, next line I'm seeing, I'm slapping on my mama. <laughs> you crazy. What did y'all say about lions? Man, you scared us, Scar. We thought you was a real nigga. A real nigga like Mustafa? Nah, for real. Hey, nigga, why ain't you king? Pfft, nigga, bitch. But Mufasa? That nigga name scares me. Mufasa. Oh, do it again. Mufasa. Oh. Why don't niggas respect me? We all know what happens at this point, and I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I almost cried watching this movie again. But let's look at his face one more time and tell me this isn't the face of a top hater. We get one of the saddest scenes ever in cinematic history, but you know this nigga's net condition was to always hate oh on niggas. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Simba, did you kill this nigga? No, Unky. I swear. It wasn't me. Now, now, Simba. It's okay. Your punk ass daddy got killed and it's all your fault. Now I'm gonna need you to slide off the block, Simba. Slide off the block, Simba. Yes. So while Simba is growing up and learning the bad ways of Hakuna Matata, this nigga Scar ends up fucking everything up. There's no eats. He banned Mustafa's name. He presses shorties if he even say it. God damn it! But ultimately, he ends up getting folded by his nephew and never stops showing traits of a bitch ass nigga. Thank you for letting me slide on the video, JP. Check out my content. Gang. <laughs> so, yeah. I hope you guys can truly see through this video how hateful these four contestants actually are. I want to give a big thank you and shout out to Atronos, Omi, and Ragu for, you know, hopping on this video. It was absolutely great working with you guys. And to all my subscribers, if you guys enjoy my videos, go check out their channels and, you know, tell me what you think. I can promise you you're going to have a laugh. And if you have a suggestion for, like, part six of Hate More, bro, j join the Discord. I'm gonna put it in the description. It will be through old-fashioned politics and democracy, you know. I tell you guys a bunch of lies and you believe it. Like any great politician. So yeah, hop on the Discord. And I'll see you guys on the next video. <laughs> Bye.